Hey guys, welcome to the video. So what's interoperability? This is the exchange of information from system A to system B. So you may have a Java-based web application sitting on Spring Boot here, and you may want to exchange information between that system and some remote system built in C-sharp.net or Node.js or Python Django or PHP Laravel, what have you. So how do you do this? This is one of the older problems, more difficult challenges in software development traditionally. These days though, if you know just a little bit about what you're doing, it's no big deal really. So interoperability, again, is the exchange of information between two disparate systems. Not desperate, disparate. So, how do you do it? Nutshell, in a nutshell, JSON objects. In the old days, we used to use XML and there was other methods and strategies even prior to that. But JSON objects is the way that we do interop most of the time these days. So what is JSON objects? JSON is short for JavaScript Object Notation. This is using JavaScript code, very light JavaScript code, to define chunks of information that you would exchange from system A to system B. That's all it is. In the old days, back in the 90s, XML became the standard for interop at some point. It was an improvement over previous methods, that's for sure, especially in the Java world. But in XML, it was too heavy, too verbose. Oftentimes, well, not oftentimes, all the times, the XML code was very heavy. So there was actually more code, XML code, than there was actual object information or data information that you want to exchange. Now, JSON objects or XML objects, if you will, they're all just text documents. That's all they are. So they're just formatted in a very particular way. That's it. JSON, even though it's JavaScript based in terms of what the object structure is, it's universal. So all of the modern languages can consume and produce JSON objects so you can manage the exchange of information quite easily. So why would you want to do this? Again, you may have system A, kind of legacy, you don't want to mess with it, but you want to be able to grab information or share information from system A to system B. Bob's your uncle, JSON. Or you may have a situation where you have a client who wants to export uh, information from your system, but your custom system, and they need, I'm not talking about client, I'm talking about a business client as opposed to a client computer. Anyhow, so you have a client, you have somebody who needs information from you to import into maybe their accounting software. Again, Bob's your uncle, JSON. Works pretty good. So interop, one of the old school problems of development, trust me, they went through many iterations, especially in the 90s, early 2000s, in terms of how to solve this. Everything settled down on JSON for the most part. There's always exceptions to the rule, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Here's the thing, here's the rule to learn about this. You know, light nimbleness typically wins. Reason JSON uh, took over, over XML-based interop uh, exchange is because JSON was far more lightweight. That's all. Far more lightweight, much easier to work with than uh, XML. That's pretty much it.